Okay, everyone, let's go ahead and do a video example using our R Commander uh, to demonstrate how we can do these questions when we're doing hypothesis testing only with summary statistics. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, means to begin with, and let's put up our two equations. So remember that if we know sigma, the equation that we're going to be using is this guy, where z equals, and then it's going to be x bar minus mu sub zero, or our hypothesized mean, divided by sigma divided by the square root of n. And if we don't know sig sigma, this is what we're going to be using. And let's go ahead and just get those to the same spot. And the equations are almost identical, except now this is going to be a t value. And instead of sigma, we only know what the sample standard deviation is, which is s. OK. So those are the equations that we use in order to find our test statistic. And it's from our test statistic that we are able to find out our p value. OK, so now that we kind of know which equations that we're going to be using, let's go ahead and look at our problem. So over here it says that the average amount of time, let's make this a little bit bigger, that it takes for couples to further communicate with each other after the first date has ended is 2.65 days. Is this average different for blind dates? So a researcher interviewed 52 couples uh, who had recently been on blind dates and found that they averaged 2.7 days to communicate with each other when the date was over. Uh, their standard deviation was 0.5. Uh, 95 days and what can be concluded at the 0.05 significance level. Okay, so uh, let's start off with what equation that we should use. The first question is do we know sigma or not? Now up here we don't know what the population standard deviation. It tells us that their standard deviation was 0.595 but that's from the sample. So because of that we want this t-test for a population mean. So let's grab that guy. Next thing down, the null and alternative hypothesis would be, well, since we're dealing with means, we want to be sure that we grab mu, which is our population parameter that we're interested in. And the null hypothesis is always equal to. And then this one needs to come from greater than, equals, less than. Equals is just a bad one. It's just there to throw you off. Uh, so it could be greater than, less than, or not equals to. And it says, is this average different for blind dates? We don't know if it's more. We don't know if it's less. So we want to put a not equals sign. Okay, so right here, we're gonna put in 2.65 because that is our baseline assumption. That's how long it's gonna take, 2.65. And our test statistic is going to be a T test statistic. So we need to actually calculate it out. And this is the way that we calculate out our test statistic. So let's go ahead and let me blow up our studio real quick and we can just do this real quick. So we know that mu not is going to be equal to 2.65. We know that n is going to be equal to uh, 52. Uh, we know that sigma, or not sigma, s, our, our sample standard deviation, is equal to 0.595. We know that alpha, we'll just label it as a, is equal to 0.05. And if you notice over here in your values, you can kind of keep track of all the values that you have, which is kind of handy. OK, we need to know our x bar, which I'm just going to call it xb. And that is going to be equal to 2.7. OK, so if we want to know what z equals, or it's not z, t equals, we've got to do x bar minus mu naught, or our hypothesized mu, divided by s divided by the square root of n. And when I hit enter, our t shows up as it's 0.60597. So if we put that in, we can put in uh, 0.60, uh, well, what the heck, I'll just copy it. If we type in t, it'll kick it out over here. And I'm just going to copy and paste it in, much easier. Okay, so now it says the p-value. So now how do we get our p-value? So a lot of people have asked about this one, and it's actually really simple. We've done this before. You know what you're doing. So remember, let me, let me draw a, 
uh, a graphic for you real quick and I will get that posted so that we can talk about. It. Okay, so I quickly made this plot real quick and I know that we're not in a normal distribution. We're actually really close to one though, but just graphically this is going to give us what we want to talk about. So we know that our our hypothesized mean is 2.65 days to respond um, after the first date. And we got 2.7, and this is scaled correctly. And we see that we want to know what is this area under the curve. And we know that this area is actually going to be pretty big. What's also interesting is remember we have done a two-tailed test, so alpha is actually on both sides. So whatever p we find or area under the curve when we are doing a two-tailed test, if we're doing it by hand, we have to double the p-value. Uh, if you let R do it, R actually will calculate it all for you. And when you tell it that you're doing a you know, greater than or less than or not equal to, it correctly calculates out the p-value accordingly, which is super handy. All right, so just a quick visual of what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the, the area under the curve. And since we're in a two-tailed test, we have to multiply it by two. Okay, so now how do we find the area under the curve? Well, we've done this before. We used to do this quite a lot in some of our earlier sections. So what we can do is we can do our basic statistics. We can go to our continuous distributions, a t, and we want to do a t probability. So all we have to do is we have to type in this t value. So let's get it real quick. Let's just go ahead and copy it and then paste it in. And then we also need to know our degrees of freedom. Remember that for these, our degrees of freedom is going to be n minus one. Let me write that down real quick. Remember that for this guy, the degrees of freedom equals n minus one. Just a good little reminder. Okay, so with that done, we know that our n is 52, so we're gonna put in 51 here. As we saw in our graph, we were kind of bigger then, so we wanna look at the upper tail. We're gonna click OK, and then we're gonna take this guy, let's copy it, and we're gonna multiply it by two. Now again, the only reason why we do this is when we calculate our p-values by hand, and we're doing a two-tailed test, we need to double that area under the curve because we are doing a two-tailed test and we've put alpha at the two ends. Okay. So in here, we're going to go put our 0.5472. Great. So we know that the p-value is greater than alpha. We would fail to reject the null hypothesis. And thus, our final conclusion is that, okay. So first of all, we need to know is, do we think that it's going to be significantly different or not significantly different? So the first thing is that since we failed to reject the uh, population mean is not significantly different. All right, so we've got both of these are saying that they're not significantly different. Let's figure out which one is in fact correct. So there is the statistically significant evidence to conclude that the true or that the population mean time for couples who have been on a blind date with each other after the date is equal this, or uh, so there is statistically insignificant evidence to conclude that the population mean time for couples who have been on a blind date to communicate with each other after the date is uh, over is different from 2.65 and it's this one. So the reason is because we can't like conclude or make um, yeah, make this conclusion that they are, uh, that it is exactly equal to 2.65. It's just we haven't gotten enough information. There is statistically insignificant evidence uh, to conclude that the population mean time for couples who have been on a blind date to communicate with each other after the date is over is different from 2.65. Okay, so that is how we would go about doing this question. And if we submit it, we can see that, yep, we went and we were able to go ahead and answer this one correctly.